Uh, this is Lance from LangChain. This is the 10th video in our LangSmith evaluation series focused on unit tests. <clears throat> so unit tests are often simple assertions. Uh, for example, they can be run as part of CI uh, for app functionality. Now let me give a motivating example here. So I've done some recent work on code generation and it follows a flow kind of like you see here. So I have this code generation node uh, that takes in some large set of documentation like, for example, a bunch of LangChain docs takes in user questions and produces code solutions based on the user question and the documentation. Now, in this flow, I typically do something uh, to the output where I convert it into this pedantic object that contains three things, a preamble, imports, and code. And I do downstream stuff with that, which you don't have to worry about here. The key point is I basically convert a natural language question into a structured answer object that has these three things. So. How can an instrument unit test, for example, that check whether like imports and the code are, are executable? That's like a very sane unit test you might want to do uh, just to convince yourself that you're able to produce like a structured code object correctly and that the imports and code actually work as expected, right? So that's like a pretty sane unit test that we, we may want. And again, if we look at our overall framing, where does this sit? So in this case, um, we don't necessarily have like a standalone data set of examples. We have, um, you know, a heuristic, like a hard-coded decision or a hard-coded assertion, um, and we have some reference um, that we expect. Um, for example, in this particular case, I expect that the code is executable correctly. Um, that's really it. And of course, unit tests they can, they can be run offline, um, you know, as part of a CI flow, or they can be run online. And we're going to talk about the offline case and how you can instrument this with Langsmith. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that Langsmith works with conventional frameworks like PyTest uh, for instrumenting tests. And we're going to set up a few things. We're just going to set up a very simple main.py file. And I'll go over there and show you that right now, which is basically going to instrument uh, my kind of generation logic. And then we're going to set up um, a few different tests as independent files in this test subdirectory uh, that will implement the various checks that we want to do, in this case, to check that imports and code are executed correctly. So I'm gonna hop over here to my VS code, so you can see it now. And you can see here, I'll move this over, um, that I'm in this introduction folder. So this is in Langsmith Cookbooks, and I've set up an app. So here's my app, and main.py you can see right here. Now this is where the logic of my chain is gonna be defined. So in this particular case, <clears throat> this generate code solution just takes in text, and what's gonna do is here's my generation prompt, which basically says you're an expert in LangChain expression language. Um, here's a document related to LangChain expression language here and um, produce an output that contains imports, a functioning code block and a preamble, um, which I will uh, state somewhere in here. Um, yeah, description of the code solution the imports and then a functioning code block. So those are three pieces. Now here, I'm actually gonna define a data model. So this is a pedantic object that contains prefix, imports, and code. And I'm gonna bind that to my LLM using with with structured output um, method, which is very convenient. And this code gen chain should output a solution object that has a prefix, import, and code. So that's kind of step one. Now, this is just a module, so this is what I'm calling my app, and that's all it has. Now, if I look at my tests here, I've defined two tests. So one is test code. So this is gonna take in, or it's gonna, it has one um, kind of piece of language expression language documentation here. Um, so this is like an example input to our function. And this text execution simply will take that input right here. It'll invoke our gen code solution, which we defined over here. So that's this guy right here. There we go. It will um, yep, it will invoke that. It will produce a solution. And now we're going to test. We're going to try to execute the imports there. And uh, basically, if that fails, we're going to we're going to flag the pytest.fail, and we're going to return the error. So that's the setup here. Likewise with code execution same flow. Um, in this case, though, we're just going to grab both the imports and the code itself. We'll try to execute all of it. And again, we'll return an error. So these are our two tests. 
Now, this looks like standard unit testing. There's nothing that's you know Lang Smith specific here. But I want to call your attention to one thing. This decorator unit, which we import from Langsmith.unit, allows you then to log this unit test to Langsmith. Um, so we have that in both cases. So there's just a simple decorator on top of this function that's going to perform our unit test. We're from Langsmith, we import unit, so that we do that in both cases. And all we have to do then is just say run PyTest. So we're in our directory, we're in this introduction directory right here. So I can just show you. So we have my app and my test here, that's it. So we can kick off, uh, we can run PyTest, and this will kick off the unit test. So this is just standard stuff. There's nothing that's pretty, that that's kind of very specific to Langsmith here, other than I've added this little decorator unit to my uh, unit test here. That's all that's going on. So it's running both of them. You can see this is kind of churning along. So that's cool. Um, and here's my other one. So I have test imports, test code. These are my two unit tests. It looks like two paths. So this is great. This is just using PyTest and running unit tests. But there's one nice trick. Because I've run these with that Langsmith decorator, if I go over to my Langsmith, so if I go to data sets and testing, so I can see now I have data sets for the directory name and then my unit test name, test imports, test code. If I go in here, I can actually see that the results of the unit tests are logged. And what's pretty nice is that um, you get all this metadata here, which is pretty good. Um, and yep, I can see the names of the various runs. I can see the result. Um, so this is again, pretty convenient. Basically, it's allowing me to log the results of the unit test to Langsmith, and each test then is logged to an independent data set, so I can keep them compartmentalized, which again is also quite nice. Um, let's actually click on one and kind of see. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and use comparison mode to look at a few of them. So here we go. This is pretty nice. So I can look at things like latency. I can look at the feedback score. I can look at the tokens used. Again, in each case, I get logged input. So this is the input that I passed to the unit test. Um, and there we go. So this is each one of them. Each each of the unit tests all pass. Uh, and I can see latency and everything. So anyway, this is a pretty nice and easy way to use Langsmith to log unit tests. Um, and this is a very convenient thing to, to run as part of your CI. Thanks.